hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for hanging with us here on First Take. Molly Karam here with Max Kellerman. Molly. Hey, Max, right. how are we? Stephen A's in NY. Stephen A, what's going on? What's going on? How y'all doing? Let's go. We got something Let's to talk about. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Good morning, Good morning, Stephen A. Smith. Good morning. How are you? Good morning Max, to the American people, By the way, please. Please. Max Kellerman. Yes. Max Kellerman, yes, yes. wonderful, wonderful job. Saturday night oh, calling the Crawford much. fight. But I want to say this to you. My condolences to you. It's the second time in the last three weeks or so you've had a whack fight to report on. Because the fact of the matter is, it's lopsided with Crawford. It was lopsided with Canelo. I mean, damn, can Max Kellerman, I mean, after Anthony Joshua, can Max Kellerman get a great fight to call? We it would gonna, be nice. It's going to be tough. It to, would be nice. It's going to be tough to top the Joshua Klitschko fight, Stephen A but okay. that's nothing against Terrence Crawford's opponent. That's how nice Terrence Crawford is with his. Guess what, gentlemen? We didn't have a whack basketball game, though. No. We have a series, kind of. The Celtics pulling off the upset on the road without Isaiah Thomas making a series 2-1. It was definitely an off game for LeBron James. He didn't score a single point in the last 16 minutes. King James, your thoughts? I had a tough game, period. Not just in the second half. Um, me personally, I didn't have it. You know, my teammates did a great job of keeping us in the game and building that lead, but me personally, I didn't have it. You know, so, I mean, that's what I got to say about my performance. Stephen A., did last night prove that LeBron is not the MVP? To me, it did. To me, it did. Now, understand that there's a dichotomy that exists here. There's something that I draw a line in the sand. And no way am I, am I questioning the fact that LeBron James is the best player in the world. We understand that you're the best player in the world. But the best player in the world, as has been proven on numerous occasions throughout NBA history, doesn't always get the league MVP award. We're talking about this season. And when I looked at LeBron James' performance last night, something I'm not losing perspective over by any stretch of the imagination, just one game, he'll be just fine, all of that other stuff. But it does harken me back to that 20 and 21 road record that the Cleveland Cavaliers had during the regular season, even though this game was at home in Cleveland. It does harken me back to the relatively 500 team they appeared to be in the second half of the season. It does harken me back to the level of inconsistency that was existing within this franchise throughout the second half of this season primarily. And taking all of those things into consideration, if you are LeBron James, you've got to man up and recognize that as opposed to sitting back or, or literally piggybacking off of media members who are so quick to point to the fact that you're the best player in the world and as a result you deserve league MVP. LeBron James is the best player in the world without question but he did not deserve to be one of the three finalists for league MVP honors this year. Not when you saw how James Harden, Russell Westbrook and Kawhi Leonard hmm. performed in the regular season. They were more consistent. They were more reliable. They showed up to work on more occasions than he did and last night to me even though it has nothing to do with the regular season it's the postseason and we all know how James Harden looked in the closeout game so we're not making any excuses but in the end what I looked at LeBron James and what he could do the fact of the matter is it made me think about we're really piggybacking off the whole MVP voting and you look the way that he looked last night game? disinterested apathetic you know a little bit out of it that's how it Stephen appeared. Stephen A, the what game? James Harden didn't look good in the what game? In the closeout game? Closeout game. Yeah, because he got closed out. You know, we should ask. Yep. I, I love me some Russell Westbrook. James Harden had a great season, but we should ask them what they thought about the game last night because they're at home watching. You know why? Because mm -hmm. they're not playing anymore. Know why? Because mm -hmm. they're not as valuable as LeBron James. Kawhi no. Leonard goes down. What happens to the Spurs' chances? Gone. Poof. Goodbye. It demonstrates, it highlights his value, his absence. Kawhi Leonard's absence on the Spurs highlights his value to that team. What happens when LeBron James has a bad game? And everyone's had bad games. True, hard to find actual bad games Michael Jordan had in the playoffs, but Kobe's had bad games. Everybody's had bad games. Magic's had bad games. Larry Bird, everyone's had bad games in the playoffs, even Michael Jordan. This was one for LeBron James. And what happened to the Cleveland Cavaliers? A team that was such a juggernaut on the road in Boston that at one point in that game, they were a shot away. I was hoping we'd get to see it from a score that said 70-something to 20-something. 
in the Eastern Conference Finals. Stephen A. Smith, you were so disgusted, I got a call. Blew up my cell. There's Stephen A. Smith screaming on me on the weekend. While I was in, don't leave out how, that it was while I was en route to White Castle. Yes. Don't leave that <laughs> Yes. Don't leave that out. Go, go I was just in my mom's house, and I was telling my sisters the whole time, this Max Keller, I'm thinking, hold on, time out. I'm not supposed to get yelled at by Stephen A. Smith on the weekend. That's not part of the job description. It but wasn't Saturday. It wasn't Saturday yet. It was still Friday. <laughs> That's true. You got me. <laughs> it was Saturday somewhere, damn it. <laughs> it was Friday night. I called it's you. I true. picked you up got the it phone, Molly, the and I called Max. I said, that damn Max Kellerman, my sisters was laughing at me. I said, I'm calling him right now. I can't believe him. You got I called him while I was en route to White Castle. You Go ahead. You got White it Castle in right under nasty. the wire. But the point is, it was such a non-competitive mismatch when LeBron's playing well. And now why is that? Not just because of how great he is, but because Kyrie Irving's supposedly a top 10 player. Because Kevin Love, not too long ago, was considered a franchise player. Some were calling him top five. He's still, he's still a max contract player. Cause, because Thompson's excellent blocking shots, grabbing rebounds, gets $17 million a year. You could argue in this NBA that's even underpaid because they have shooters everywhere you look. They didn't have, you know, J.R. Smith. Okay, let's go get Channing Fry last year. Let's pick up Kyle Korver. Everywhere you look, there's a Darren Williams coming off the bench at the point. Everywhere you look, there's a shooter. And yet, as soon as LeBron has a bad game, they can't win. And this has been reflected Throughout LeBron James's career, you could argue, well, the Cavs originally didn't have anyone else. Fine. But this Cavs team is loaded, supposedly. And they can't win without LeBron James. If that's not an MVP, what you call that? As soon as he goes down, these supposed all-star teammates lose. Well, Max Kellerman, I mean, that's a very eloquent point that you make, but I I allow me to retort. Um, Basically, what you're going about saying is that LeBron James blew the game last night. It's nothing to lose sleep over. He'll respond. He's the best in the world. We is just one game, and I'm certainly not about to judge and excoriate LeBron James over one relatively meaningless playoff game because it's not like they're going to lose the series because of it. It's not like it was a game six or whatever. You're up 2-0. Now it's 2-1. You win 3-1. You go up 3-1, and then you go back to Boston. You close it out, or you close it out in the game six if they were lucky enough for that to happen. But here's the reality. The reason why this is not the day, Max Kellerman, for you to make that argument. Kevin Love had 28. 28 points last night. He had a double-double. He hit seven threes. He shot 50% from the field, better than 50% from three-point range. Kyrie Irving had 29. Shot 50% from the field, better than 50% from three-point range. Two of the big three members showed up. Tristan Thompson, 18 points, 15 rebounds. He showed up. J.R. Smith hit some big shots. Now, defensively, everybody has to, I think, on a day like today, J.R. Smith and uh, 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 Iman Shepard need to be answering the call as to why they messed up on their defensive assignment in terms of switching or not switching, and ultimately Avery Bradley getting an absolutely wide-open look to win the game. But nevertheless, what this, nevertheless, what it was is not just about Brad Stevens. If you look at it, for them to be that lost, that lost, so it was way one too they were supposed to switch yeah. the state, they messed up. They, they, they messed up their defensive assignment. But what is undeniable is the fact that LeBron James didn't show up. He didn't go through his regular warm-up routine. He seemed out of it from Jump Street. You heard Barkley and Kenny Smith talking about it. He just seemed in out of space from the very beginning, even before tip-off time. He did not appear to be himself. He blew that game based on what you're saying. Right, what I'm that saying is, is that, that it was his... emblematic of some things we saw during the season. But, and that demonstrates his value, Stephen A. The Cavs had so? the second best record in the East. The Cavs are, have, have now lost a single <clears throat> playoff game right. by a shot that, I mean, a sure. friendly rim. It got a, a nice bounce. It almost didn't go in. And they lose by it's the nice skin time. of their teeth after destroying the number one seed in the Eastern Conference, just waxing them twice on the road. And why did they lose? Because for all his supporting cast and, and, and how great well, Kyrie and Kevin Love are, who've never been winning players without LeBron, maybe right. not Kevin Love's fault. He was in the Western Conference, his best season. He's like 500. Kyrie Irving on miserable one-loss record teams uh, before LeBron got there. When LeBron doesn't play, they still stink. They cannot win without him. And on the night where he's just kind of a, an average NBA forward instead of LeBron James, maybe slightly below average even offensively, 
then it doesn't right. matter if Kevin Love gets 28 and Kyrie gets 29. They can't figure out how well, to win. Well, let me win. ask you a question. That demonstrates his value. Well, let me ask you a question. I'm, I'm going to throw out a couple of points, and I'm going to ask you a question. Number one, Kevin Love was on Minnesota. Yeah, he was in the Western Conference. Also, he didn't have much of a team, but he was a walking double-double. We'll give credit where credit is due. In the case of Kyrie Irving, you act like the dude was in the league for nine, ten years, losing. The dude came in immediately after LeBron departed. There was no team to play right. on. He was the first overall pick who had just, like, 17 games on his resume as a college player at Duke. I mean, listen, the, the fact the matter is we can't hold him accountable for what he didn't do being so young and coming into the league. But let me get to this question to you because we need to understand and dissect for our audiences what we're talking about when we talk about league MVP. You're giving the impression that I am not recognizing LeBron James value. I totally understand LeBron James value, not to mention the fact that I obviously believe he is the greatest in the world. What I'm trying to say is this one thing about your value, and then there's another category about your performance. And there have been times this year where even you have admitted he may have stepped back to help mm -hmm. others ultimately move forward Maybe because he had night. a big because he had a bigger picture in mind. I'm saying to you that may very well be true. But at the end of the day, your performance, even though it may have been on purpose to step back to help others on the come up during the regular season, took away from the greatness that you could display, which is why the others deserve to be on the list ahead of him for the MVP In honors. terms of the com competition, in terms of the entertainment and the business, we can table that. That's something else. In terms of the competition of the regular season, all you're doing is jockeying for position to give yourself the best chance Fine. to win a championship. LeBron but James is better at doing that in the regular season and in the playoffs than any pl player on the planet. He's done it again. I want to say something about Kyrie Irving. You're right. We cannot say definitively one way or another about Kyrie Irving being a top 10 player, being a winning player, being a just having the ability to be the best player on a winning franchise. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous because when you put your eyeballs on that guy, you're like, come on, that guy is ridiculous. He's just as good as Westbrook or Harden or Steph or Damian Lillard or CP3 or just name a point guard, John Wall. On defense. He's good. At, he's as good as any of those guys, right? But I don't I think okay. you can still legitimately say this. It's an open question with Kyrie. Can he be the best player on a winning team? Because it's not just that they were terrible before LeBron got there. It's that they are terrible when LeBron doesn't play still. They're still no good. They lose much more than they win when LeBron doesn't play. And last night, the question was, did well, LeBron pull back a little bit to get Kyrie to see where Kyrie can take the team to get him to take a larger role? He did that, I thought, against Toronto last year in the Eastern Conference uh, Finals. And I thought, watching that game, I wondered if that's the case. And even though Kyrie put up numbers, he ultimately did not lead his team to victory. And they had a huge lead. Well, Max, he was the guy that scored with 10 seconds left. The LeBron was on the court when they were playing defense and failed to cover Avery Bradley. Not to mention the fact that, let me, you can slice it any way you want. You are the best player in the world. You have no business going scoreless for the last 16 minutes and 31 seconds. And, and you a have no LeBron business a doing game. that. You're, all right, that's, that's all I'm saying. And when, he has a bad game, when he has a bad game, it's they not can't just win. A bad game. Kyrie can have a bad yeah, game, they win. Kevin Love has a bad game, they win. Steph Curry can have a bad game. Kevin Durant can win. But nobody's denying LeBron that. has a bad game, why, they lose. Why, why, why do you keep regurgitating? Him. No one's disputing that. Therefore, what he's I'm the most saying valuable. is he has taken time off during the regular season, and that would mean the guys that did it in Kawhi, James Harden, and Russell Westbrook deserve to be on the list ahead of them. Period. Let's leave it there, gentlemen. We got a lot more to get into. So after